this video, we'll teach you how to choose the right storage options for your video editing computer to ensure optimal performance with redundancy, capacity, and capability. We'll start by identifying what matters when you choose a drive, from read and write speeds to capacity to drive and connection type. Next, we'll talk about managing data and programs on different system drives. That includes what to put on the boot drive, scratch drive, and main video storage. We'll also discuss the different types of storage solutions, including RAID solutions, and we'll go over the best configurations for editing. We'll end with some examples showing how video editing system storage can be set up. Chris here from VideoMaker. There are time codes below if you want to know what we're covering or want to jump to any place in this video. Do you want to edit faster? If so, we have a list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know. To get it, click on this card or the link in the description. Let's start off by taking a look at the specs you'll need to understand when choosing a drive for video editing. We'll begin with read and write speeds. The read and write speeds of your drive will have a big impact on how quickly you can move data from one drive to another and how much data you can work with all at once. Speeds are usually measured in megabits per second or gigabits per second. Higher numbers are generally better. However, you'll often see speeds written as megabytes per second or gigabytes per second. Pay attention to the difference. Since bytes are eight times larger than bits, speeds notated in bytes may appear lower at first glance, but they may actually be faster. Write speed matters most when you are ingesting footage or transferring data between drives. Faster drives mean faster file transfers. Read speed matters most when you need to access the data, for instance, while you're editing. During video playback, data is streamed from your device as the media is displayed. As long as the read speeds exceed the bitrate of the video, the video will play back smoothly. If the read speed is lower than your video's bitrate, you may get choppy playback or none at all. With that in mind, you can look at the bitrate of the video files you want to edit to figure out the minimum acceptable read speed for your storage drive. For instance, an HD video shot at 24 frames per second and saved as an H.264 will have a bitrate of only 8 megabits per second. Any modern drive will be able to play back multiple streams of this video file type. An HD ProRes 422 file has a bitrate of 117 megabits per second, still well within the capabilities of most storage drives. Moving up on the scale, a 4K clip in ProRes 422 has a bitrate of 471 megabytes per second. Remember, a 4K clip has four times the resolution as an HD clip, meaning more data needs to be transferred at once to get smooth playback. Therefore, to work with 4K ProRes footage, you'll need a drive with read speeds over 471 megabits per second, more if you need to work with multiple streams at the same time. Top-end internal drives offer speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes per second and beyond. That's 28,000 megabits per second, more than enough to support multiple streams of 4K ProRes 422 at 24 frames per second. External drives commonly offer speeds from around 900 megabytes per second up to 2,800 megabytes per second. Look at the type of footage you need to edit to determine your specific drive speed needs. Drive speed, however, is only part of the equation. While you might buy an extremely fast drive, it won't do you any good without the input and output speeds to match. I.O. speeds are affected by both the cable type and the connection type. There are several different options for internal and external drives. The fastest connection type for internal drives is NVMe, supporting read and write speeds up to 32 gigabits per second. The fastest SATA connection is considerably slower at 16 gigabits per second. However, this is still faster than the most common connection type for external drives, USB-C. USB-C can transmit data up to 10 gigabits per second. That's 10,000 megabits per second, still plenty for most video editing work. However, if you need to work with multiple streams of high bitrate video, you may want to consider an editing system and storage drive with Thunderbolt support. The most recent standard, Thunderbolt 4, can transmit data at up to 40 gigabits per second. Finally, let's look at how the size and type of drive you use impacts performance. 
Starting with size, when buying a new internal drive, you need to make sure it will fit in the drive bay inside your computer. A big 3.5 inch drive won't fit inside most laptops, for example. More important in terms of performance, however, is drive type. Generally, you'll be choosing between a hard disk drive and a faster solid state drive. HDDs are slower, but are also more affordable, so they are often used for archives that require a larger capacities. SSDs are more expensive, but allow you to access data faster, so they are preferred for working drives. Now let's move on to system configuration and look at what you need from your storage drives in different use cases, starting with the first step in post-production, ingest. For the ingest phase, you'll need a way to transfer media from your camera to your editing computer. Often, you can connect your camera and transfer files that way, but a dedicated media card reader with fast I.O. can make the process a lot faster. Look for an I.O. option that meets or exceeds the read-write speeds on your camera's media card. Now let's talk about the system boot drive. This is where you'll store your computer's operating system and applications. This should be a fast internal drive, but it doesn't have to be a large capacity. After all, it doesn't need space for storing large video files. The goal is to allow your system and programs to boot up more quickly. Usually we assign an SSD or NVMe drive to this role. Next up is the scratch drive. This is where your editing application will temporarily store data as needed as you are working. Again, the goal is to allow your system to access this information quickly, so the drive needs to be fast, but it doesn't need to be big. An SSD or NVMe will work well here too. Now let's take a look at your storage options for your video files. Video files will generally fall into two camps, the video files you're working with on your current project and the video files you want to save in an archive. When you're editing, your computer is reading data, so you'll need to prioritize read speeds when choosing a storage option for videos in the first camp. Like with boot and scratch drives, SSDs and NVMe drives are good choices here. For example, speed is less important. The goal here is to keep a lot of data safe for a long time, but in theory, you won't need access to the data that often, and you definitely won't be editing those files directly. That means you can choose a less expensive HDD if you wish, though SSDs are a good option as well. RAID storage is another great option for keeping your data safe or to boost performance. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. Any type of drive can be used, but you'll need at least two and ideally four or more separate drives, so hard disk drives are often favored for the price point. Depending on how you configure your RAID, this storage option can offer both redundancy and performance. Let's go over some of the most common RAID configurations and their benefits. RAID 0, or striping, is used to maximize speed by spreading data evenly across multiple drives. However, it does not offer data protection through redundancy. RAID 1, or mirroring, creates exact copies of your data on two separate drives. This creates redundancy, meaning that if one drive fails, you can still access your data on the other drive. RAID 5 also uses the striping method to store data across multiple disks, but it also stores parity information to help reconstruct data in the event of a drive failure. This method increases read and write speeds compared to RAID 1, but still offers some level of redundancy. RAID 10 combines the performance of the striping process from RAID 0 with the redundancy of mirroring from RAID 1. This setup requires four drives. Now that you know more about your storage options, let's take a look at a couple of real-world examples of video editing systems with storage optimized for video editing. We'll start with a mobile workstation option, the Dell 7770. This editing system offers up to four NVMe SSD drives with RAID support, allowing you to spread data across the four drives. Since these drives can all work together, this allows for much higher bandwidth as opposed to independent drives. The system also offers flexibility in how you use those drives. For instance, you can configure two drives as a RAID array for video storage. For the remaining two drives, you can use one as a boot drive and one as a scratch disk, solving the challenges of high resolution video editing. The Dell 7770 features an access door for easy access to the NVMe drives, allowing you to hot replace failed drives without data loss. The design also includes 
includes an SD card reader with Thunderbolt 4 connectivity to make ingest easier. Now let's look at a desktop option, the Dell 3660. This system offers three NVMe M.2 slots and supports internal RAID configurations like RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. It also features an SD card reader and an optional Thunderbolt port. Both of these systems come equipped with fast drives and can be configured to boost performance or to keep your data extra safe. By now, you should understand how to choose the right storage options for your video editing computer. Using the right drives in the right configurations will ensure optimal performance, providing you with redundancy, capacity, and capability to do your best work. Remember, if you'd like to get our list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know, click on this card or the link in the description. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. And the next video will cover how to edit raw or a native video format.